Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Comment of the Week. These are the best comments from the time period, April the 21st through the 27th. Okay, I'm trying something here. I'm extending this, okay? Uh, this particular week, I had so many freaking amazing comments, I couldn't just settle on six. I might make this a new thing in the future where I have mentions, then honorable mentions, then the medal ceremony. All right, starting out with the mentions, we have Frag Taster. Gundam Russ must be a fool if he expects people to give him money or buy his merch at this point in his channel's evolution. I've seen his content. It's amateurish, uninspired, uninventive, and just the same boring copy and paste cookie cutter game room garbage that literally thousands of other people here on YouTube have been doing for the last 15 years. YouTube gaming is actually shrinking, not growing. And the smaller retro gaming niche segment is in even worse shape. Our friend Smash JT can vouch for this personally. It's a tiny market with a limited viewer pool that is already overflowing with little competing channels uh, that are all doing the same exact thing, like Roxaloid Productions, who has just a few more videos than Gundam Russ, but five times more subs. Gundam Russ has over 300 plus videos and still barely breaks 100 views on most of his content. It's one thing to do this for fun, but if he expects donations, Teespring, free money, and adoring fans to basically make this a career from the get-go, well, he is delusional. He's in the same pool of competing with big fish like Stop Skeletons from Fighting, Dreamcast Guy, Metal Jesus Rocks, Beat em Up, I got it right there. Sometimes I accidentally say, uh, say something else. Beat em Ups, and literally th hundreds, literally hundreds of huge channels who do the same kind of content as him, but vastly better, with massive, dedicated, loyal audiences. It's a market already monopolized by numerous established big channels, and it's almost impossible for a few smaller channels to ever grow or compete with them, something Smash JT can also vouch for. Sure. Next up, Shinra. This is the man who made me an anti-e-beggar along with John Hancock. Top Hat is incredibly wealthy with a collection of games unrivaled in the UK. Panzer Dragoon Saga, a box version of Earthbound, you name it. He's so well off he's thrown working games consoles into the river in his videos. Really? He takes extended holidays around the world and has the cheek to ask his audience to pay for it. He's been at this for years. He also used to make fun of the people who donated to him in his earlier videos. You can see the manipulation of his audience in his latest Pity Me Begging videos. He's an absolute fraud. He's deleting comments over there too. You can see some strange conversations and replies going nowhere. I've long hoped that someone somewhere would blow the lid on his shady antics. Sadly his latest stunt has worked and his Patreon is growing rapidly. An able-bodied man is sitting around all day, living off the money of others, during a global health crisis. He should be ashamed of himself. And his videos are rubbish. They are basically Wikipedia articles read out over gameplay footage. Top Hat Gaming is a charlatan and a con man. Do not fall for his manipulation. He is laughing at you, giving him free money, laughing all the way to the bank. A scoundrel. Thank you, Shinra. Next up, Roller Core, Roller X Core, I mean to say. The problem with Mr. Top Hat is the Patreon thing is clearly not about the money, as looking around him and the fact he has assets outside of his four walls clearly shows that. He is, it's a control issue, and he wants what other people have around him. He repeatedly mentions that his friends have this and that, and he wants the same. He deleted any posts that went on to give him any constructive criticism, not just a trolling. He got so that only the comments with well wishes and positivity can be shown so that the sheeple might give money to him and cannot see he has options outside of this. After, after he got the money, he proceeded to brag about it on Twitter saying in his word he fixed his business overnight, realizing his poor wording choice, he then went and amended it. I actually don't mind Patreon, people can do what they want with their money. But this really angers me as he is using some shitty tactics and an even shittier, at an even shittier time to get money from people. And a lot probably a lot less fortunate than himself. 
Some great suggestions you made, but that would involve him actually having to do some work and participating in the community, clearly something he doesn't enjoy as he wants everything on a plate. Thank you, Roller X Core. Now we get into the honorable mentions. First honorable mention comes to us from Cos Tech. This basically echoes my comments from a few months ago where people just want to be a part of something, want to belong. Some of these people could be those who were ostracized when they were younger or even now as an adult. I get that. Or maybe they were loners for other reasons and now they realize they no longer want to be alone, but don't know how in the real world to be, so they use their online personalities to connect with others. I get that too. But since that comment, I feel as though I can add one more type. Those who don't want to admit they were are wrong. They initially believed in the missing mission, goal, whatever, but can't admit they were wrong. So they continue supporting these charlatans, these snake oil salesmen, these con artists, so that they don't feel like fools. I get that as well. Most, if not all people, at some point have been taken, taken for a fool. But most won't admit it, even when the proof is undeniable. You could be someone who was snuckered, suckered out of it, I don't know, $100,000 in front of 1,000 people, and still state that you weren't wrong, that your investment will still pay dividends tenfold. Not sure that's an actual thing, not into finance myself. Even as the con artist is being hauled away in cuffs while the building that held your money is burning to the ground and you realize you have absolutely no legal recourse or insurance policy. Thank you, Kostek. Next up, Frag... Were you also in the... We got a two-timer! We got a two-timer, I think! Frag Taster. Yeah, Rick, it's so sad to see Goldberg these days. He used to be my favorite wrestler back in the days of WCW, taking up the mantle after the Ultimate Warrior. Ever since this year started, I found my mind recently looking back on the guys I used to look up to growing up. John claude Van Damme, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Chuck Norris, Hulk Hogan, Mike Tyson, well, Mike coming back, Goldberg, Triple H, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ronnie Coleman, Jackie Chan, Chet Lee, and a lot of guys like that. I watch a lot of the old movies and matches and look up clips on YouTube of them training back in the day. I've been reminiscing while looking at some old wrestling and bodybuilding magazines too and trying to find some old interviews on the internet. Just stuff like that. Kind of wondering where they are right now and where time has gone. It literally seems like just yesterday that they were grabbing the world by the balls and kicking ass. When I see these guys now and how much they have aged and I compare that to what they once were at their peak when I worship them, I honestly feel really sad. It's these guys that remind us that nothing lasts forever and that time stops for no man. That is what, uh, that what you are now will eventually be lost to time. Uh, all we have now of Universal Soldier John Claude Van Damme or Commando Schwarzenegger or Degeneration X, Triple H, and a bunch of old fuzzy videos and Polaroids is on the internet. It already really makes you think about life. You know what I mean? It's depressing to think about, really. Thank you there, Frag Taster. The last honorable mention comes to us from Shelf Warmer. It's times like this when people's true colors shine. Can someone show me an example of a YouTuber deciding to not accept Patreon for the duration in an effort not to be an extra financial burden on his slash her patrons as a thank you for the support during the good times? The needs of the many outweighing the needs of the few are the one. If these are really tip jars and gestures of appreciation like they tell us, is it a two-way street? Nah. Most of the time, the videos they already were making before are now part of a transaction. Try now, pay later. It's also funny how a YouTuber's collection is off limits to help fund the video making hobby. The Wonder Megas, the F-Town Martys, Pippins, etc. All stay on the shelf, never to be priced, pried from the cold dead hands, not when it's the viewer's responsibility to fund the content. What's mine is mine, and what's yours is yours, also mine attitude. Compartmentalizing one's assets from their wealth, from the YouTube persona to the real world hoarder, it looks good in the background. No one will take me seriously as a gamer if I have to speak in front of an empty shelf. Despite what you've heard, one doesn't make a lot of money on YouTube. That's why I quit my job to do this full time. 
and a million justifications follow, and yet I still smell bullshit. What was my name again? I've had this handle for a long time. Ever wondered what shelf warmer means? What it really means? <clears throat> now we get the origin of the name shelf warmer. Are your shelves warm or are they cold? By your own hands or built by others? Do you collect things you use? Do you use the things you collect? Does that shelf candy warm your heart or are you looking past it at the empty space next to that item and what you're going to put out there next? Forever chasing the dragon. On a normal, on a normal week, you'd probably be a medalist there, shelf warmer. That's pretty damn good. All right, here it comes, here it comes. We're here, baby. Into the medal ceremony we go. First off, we have the bronze medal going to Wolfpack 1. Hey, how dare you compare Reggie, Radical Reggie, to a violent raging alcoholic that needs to go to AA? Raging alcoholics are not that bad compared to Reggie. Laugh out loud. In all fairness, though, I do respect Reggie and anyone else who serves or have served in the military. He stood up to be a soldier, and I want to see him make better decisions, stop putting games ahead of himself, and come out on top in the end a lot more than MGR at least. I personally believe it's a mild disorder where some people collect stuff because they are unsatisfied in some way or another with themselves. When they collect things ahead of their well-being, it not only helps them temporarily feel re respite from their issues, but they also feel like they aren't worth anything to anyone without their material objects. Thus, they feel it's not uh, worth putting themselves first. You gotta learn to love yourself first, people. I know someone probably might say, I shouldn't be armchair uh, diagnosing someone. I know I don't have the right to say, the right to say that Reggie has these types of issues, but I believe it's normal and fair to tell people what you genuinely think of them as long as it's not irresponsible and doesn't cause harm to anyone. I would prefer for people, for people to tell me how they truthfully view me from their perspective, good or bad, instead of keeping it uh, for the sake of being, keeping it in for the sake of being cordial. Maybe I get more insight into myself. Maybe I see a flaw in myself that I wasn't privy to before. Maybe they're just wrong and I can show them through my actions that the perception they have of me is indeed a misconception. Point is we are all not perfect and I think we should let each other know what perception we all have of each other. To take it all in perspective, to find truth within yourself and your fellow human beings. One of the main things that separates us from other species is the ability to communicate in visual, verbal, and written form. So use it. It's what allows us to constantly move forward and progress as human beings. Fuck, I tend to ramble, I suffer from periodic insomnia, and my mind works a mile a minute at times. Keep it radical. Hmm. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people will understand where you're coming from, because none of us are perfect. And what you touch upon here is something very interesting. It's that a lot of people will collect. And in the case of Radical Reggie, some people might call him a hoarder. Uh, I don't know what the classification for that would be. He he collects a lot of stuff. He displays it neatly. Uh, there was other comments that didn't make it into this metal ceremony that were bringing, up, bringing it up that the difference between a hoarder and an actual collector is neatly arranging things. Neatly arranging things on shelves? Like, that's the... Like, uh, uh, for instance, a good example would be of a hoarder. Um, Aaron Kosharsky. I saw videos where he's just going off, buying tons of stuff at a time, putting it in his vehicle... Um, he got concert t-shirts once, like hundreds and hundreds of concert t-shirts. And I'm thinking like, you know, what are you going to do with all those, all those new kids on the block t-shirts? Like people that just collect and collect and collect and you can tell it when they're holding these things, when they're showing these things off, things that they're never going to use, things that really might just get forgotten. They need to replace something within themselves. They need to, maybe they don't take a lot of value in themselves and they need something to do that. And sometimes people don't even realize what they're doing or they're avoiding some problems that they need to uh, address in their real life, but they lose themselves. They lose themselves in certain hobbies like collecting because it's a lot easier to collect things than it is to maybe work on some problems that you have, maybe physical problems, maybe you wanna get yourself in better shape. Oh, that's tough, that's difficult. Let me just buy some video games over here and uh, that'll take my mind off of it. Uh, you could argue that, you know, entertainment, hobbies in general, 
a lot of it takes our mind off of things that we can't face. I think I'll keep it there, okay? I gotta leave something for the other medalist. Okay, Wolfpack, thank you so much for the comment. Next up, we got, with the silver medal, Data Ombre. There comes a point in every gamer's life when you simply will not have the time to devote to playing and experiencing video games for large amounts of time anymore. I see that quite clearly from my own example. I'm married and a father of two young kids. I've always been into collecting, tinkering with, playing with video game systems, retro computers, and technology in general. In the beginning, it was only myself. I was single, and the interest mentioned above would begin and end affecting only me, myself, and I. There was so much spare time available to experience these hobbies for as long as I wanted to. It took so much space to be able to own it all, and I didn't care. It impacted only me. But even then, I really realized that there was no way in hell that I could go through all the hundreds and hundreds of games, tech, computers, uh, perforennials, perper <laughs> I have trouble with certain words like that. Perfer <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm just going to laugh. I'm going to skip it. And then it's going to be, I don't know. It's certain words. I don't know what it is. Or some of you like that. There's just certain words you look at. And you can probably pronounce them, but you start laughing because it's so funny because of the word. I don't know. Et cetera. And genuinely be able to enjoy them all. I literally would only focus on a very select few items that really kept me entertained, and the rest were well mostly kept as trophies. Fast forward to today, married kids, and I basically have the time to only, on a daily basis for example, unbox a system, set it up, plug it in, play a game for 15 minutes or so, turn it off, pack it all away. Most of the collection are now officially all trophies that sit unused for no good reason, but are heavily weighing on the available space in our house and as such are negatively affecting uh, other family members. I think the above example sooner or later happens to everyone that is into collecting of some sort. If you're single, it begins and ends with you. But if you ever plan to step into a relationship or grow a family, it will most definitely have some sort of an impact on your loved ones and it will force you to reevaluate re your priorities. I think that today I would only perhaps be able to justify my affection to all these items and interest if I were so financially well off that I had the means to own a larger house with plenty of extra space with a dedicated man cave where I would store all this stuff with zero impact to others. I'm not well off, so yeah, time to sell. It's hoarding. This is my honest, humble opinion, so take it for what it is. I'll share a story. And one thing I've noticed on Show Off Saturdays is I have a lot of stuff. I'm the opposite from a lot of people that want to display trophies and a lot of different things, whereas I might get something and I might think that it might have a value in the future. And sometimes I'm right. And I'm not just talking about like video games or something like that. I'm talking about maybe something that comes off of something or I just put in some new headlights. But I didn't throw away the old headlights because I think at some point I'm going to have a use for those old headlights. I think there's going to be a part or a piece maybe, and it might be silly. I might not ever need them but I just can't let it go because I think there's going to be something in that I need. Might just be something like a little screw that I need in there, you know, that matches up because I will remember back to a time where I'm like, I'm just, you know, punching myself going, damn, if I only would have kept that. So do I have a hoarder mindset? Do I have a hoarder mentality? When I talk about things like this on the YouTube channel, don't think I keep myself out of it. Okay. Now, I'm not uh, like an Aaron Kosharski or anything like that. I'm not going out buying, you know, hundreds and hundreds of t-shirts for old concerts. You know, again, like, why would I need a New Kids on the Block t-shirt? Why would I ever need that? Like, what's the selling market for that? You know, uh, if you're a reseller, then you're just, you know, that's a whole different level because you're getting things for the purpose of just reselling, even though you might not ever resell it. Uh, last thing I got like that with the purpose of reselling was a box still over there. A box of Reese's Travis Scott cereal, and it ranges anywhere from on eBay from you know ten bucks a box to ten thousand dollars a box. Sometimes there's really joke pricings on eBay and everything like that. But getting back to what you're talking about, uh, and also I'm like I don't have a family, I don't have children, but if I one day created a family, you know I passed on my radical seed then I would have to cut certain things out. I would have to, I would probably sell off a lot of stuff I have game-wise because I wouldn't have the time. 
And yeah, the YouTube channel, it, I would probably not be on it a whole lot if I had it like a family. But right now, as a single guy, I have a lot of time. Thank you so much for the comment there, Data Umbre. And here it is. The well-earned shiny, shiny gold comment. The Winged Avenger gets the gold today. Winged Avenger says, Rick, Top Hat Gaming Man is flat out lying to you. He is very cunning. I have known his channel since I discovered his series of admittedly interesting gaming slash travel videos called Handhelds Around the World. He stupidly rarely makes those videos, but I occasionally go to his channel to see whether he has made a Switch Lite video. I left a message on his new eBagging video telling him that he should consider getting a job and that it was a shot in the dark to expect to make a living by posting videos on YouTube. He deleted the comment immediately. So when he tells you that he finds it interesting to hear views that differ wildly from the popular consensus, he's lying. He only, he only finds it interesting when he is unable to delete the comment as in the case of your video. In that sort of situation, he is forced to respond. He starts by softening you up, a common law enforcement tactic to make you receptive to the BS he's about to spew at you. Incredibly, this man is so delusional that he sees no problem in admitting, in admitting that his zeal to be an eternal gaming YouTuber has led him to the unbelievable, un, un, enviable, okay, unenviable, you know, it's really small text here, sorry about that, you know, because it's a big comment, I had to compress it, predicament of having to live with his parents. For all we know, he may literally be living in his mom's basement. I was shocked to find out the top hat has a wife. Sadly, he's obviously surrounded by people who are afraid to tell him he's wrong. He calls himself forward thinking, but this alleged forethought has led him to being a 30-something living with his parents. Also, where was his far-sightedness when he hired an agent to collect rent on his house instead of doing it himself? Giving an agent X amount of every rent payment is a waste of money, but when you let your uh, silly dreams get to your head, it's easy to throw money to the wind. The rental guarantee is also a terrible thing to agree to. You should handpick tenants who you can tell will pay. Real forward thinking is having a real job and putting lots of money away in case something terrible happens. Rick, when you call his videos hobby videos, I take it to mean that they are videos about a hobby whereas the content creators seem to take it as, a me uh, as meaning videos that are themselves a hobby. So it seems that the first people whose mind it crosses to consider YouTube a hobby are the e-beggars. Also, while it's true that begging is a criminal offense in the UK, e-begging is not. They just make a silly distinction in the UK. They have lots of stupid laws. They ban guns, and now London is the knife murder capital of the world. He then goes on to make points that are unrelated to your present video. If he had really been interested in your content for months, he would have left these thoughts much earlier, since you've been talking about this stuff forever. He makes the typical e-beggar arguments that Netflix is the same as what he's doing. The sleight of hand is failing to mention that YouTube has rules whereby it pays content creators a portion of the ad revenue. Those who don't get any ads are just doing it as a hobby. Patreon is used by these people to e-beg. Patreon should be for those who are doing something useful for society, but are not paid for it. Gaming YouTubers abuse that platform. What they always fail to mention is that, instead of having to pay for an online video service, YouTube gives it to them for free. And it pays them if they meet certain requirements. Netflix has its own video platform, which is a cost and which has to be paid for by charging customers money. Top Hat has already proven that he's a terrible businessman, so he'll never understand these notions. Rick, you're wrong when you say he's good at talking. You would expect an, an Englishman to be able to speak English well, but he talks like a decent 16-year-old. He makes a mistake in every third sentence. He doesn't understand elementary rules that almost everyone follows, such as that objectives mustn't, mustn't be plural. He always says uh, games console, for example. Does he also say cookies jar? And he's a teacher. Top Hat ends by saying, being able to speak to you and put forward my views is enough for me. I'll say that it would have been enough for me too, but Top Hat deleted my comment. Thank you, Rick.
if you allow this comment to stay on here. I don't see any reason why I would not allow that to stay on here. In fact, you got the gold medal of this week, meaning you were the best comment of that week, Winged Avenger. Now you say you left a message on his video telling him he should consider getting a job and it was a shot in the dark to expect to make a living by posting videos on YouTube. The fact that he deleted it almost right away immediately, that tells you something right there. That tells you something right there, all right? I have not known you to leave the kind of comments that are really hateful to people. I've not known you to leave those kind of comments. I've seen comments you've left on other channels. And the fact that he would see that and delete it instantly, no replies, no response, and other people told me the same thing happened. That's a tell. That's a really big tell. There are people that I don't even really call out that hard. I just basically bring it up and I question, I question their uploads when they have a video talking about, you know, you've seen it all before, uh, times are rough, things are sad, I don't feel good, I don't feel good about the platform. I look at it, I give my response, and almost instantly when people start going and giving their thoughts to that video, they start deleting the comments. Delete, 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 delete. Not responding, not responding, but just deleting. In a recent case, I had one instance to where I called out one person who obviously was a liar, obviously was a fake. Okay, this person is not that good at hiding it, and I hear recently that they enlisted their upload. That's a tell. That's a tell people know that they're doing something wrong. They're being a little shady. Okay, if you have an upload and you're talking about things going on in your life, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. If it's truthful, if it's from the heart, I have no issue with him getting on YouTube and talking about things that are going on in his life. But it's that connection, when he's connecting it to conditions for his own audience to start giving him money. That's what I have an issue with. Not everybody has an issue with it, but I personally have an issue with it. As a person that doesn't take a single red cent from their audience, I have an issue with it. And I call it out. Now, the argument that he made about Netflix was also a tell. It's also a tell that he thinks his uploads are on that same level as a Netflix. He defends his YouTube channel. He defends the fact that he takes money from his audience when he's also getting paid from YouTube. Okay? He's a partner for YouTube. They're revenue sharing partners. He is getting paid from YouTube. And he has, like you said, he's not paying YouTube one red cent. So he's on YouTube, he's uploading, and he's getting paid from YouTube, but he's complaining that maybe he needs more money, it's not enough money? Well, that's not on your audience to support you. It just isn't. I mean, is he going through these things? Um, I have, I would say I have no reason to doubt a lot of the things in that upload, but sometimes if someone proves themselves to be a liar, I'll finish on this, if someone proves themselves to be a liar, a consistent liar, or someone who hides comments, deletes comments, you know, like he deleted your comment, a lot of other people's comments, they came to me and they said, hey, I left a comment on an upload just asking him. Uh, now, maybe there's some people that went to that comment and they were mean and really hateful, but uh, most of my community just likes to get to the bottom of things and question things. So the fact that he was deleting almost all those comments really leaving legitimate questions is a tell. That's a tell. But keeping the comments saying positive things about the video. Hey, we're going to donate money to you. That's a tell. Right there, that's a tell. So look beyond, look beyond what they say in the videos. Look beyond that. Try to look at the actions that they take and that will reveal to you exactly who the people are. Right? Now, can people improve? Could Top Hat Gaming Man improve? I certainly hope so. I'm not holding my breath on it, but one, one idea that I have is through criticism, we can help a lot of people, a lot of channels, and help people improve. You know, but that's mostly if they see what they're doing is actually wrong.